for those of you who know me for a while, you know that I'm a prolific blogger and that I've been blogging now for over 12 years and putting out my thoughts on the net. And in June, after I spoke down here in Talent, the day after I talked, Google locked me out of all my Google networks, including Blogger, YouTube, Gmail, Google Documents, and everything else gone through Google. I have to say I must thank Rick over here. He's the one who said, oh, why don't you run the CC cleaner on your computer? <laughs> and I did, and it found the spyware was Google. It, it is. That. But the fact that it would turn it out really freed me up. I haven't blogged online since last June, but I am going to start blogging online at the site called timeout.com. T-H-Y-M-E-H-O-W-D-T, time out, <laughs> and we'll be up probably sometime before the end of February. I will give Laura some links to put out. Uh, I've been publishing wherever I can on the net. I was going to read a couple of my essays called Mind Games because, well, that's what we're playing now. But I think instead of reading essays that will eventually be on the net to publish, I'd rather get right down to solutions of what ways that we can take to do what Uncle Albert had suggested. Uncle Albert is my name for Albert Einstein. And Einstein, if you want to quote, Einstein's the guy to get your quote from. The quote, we cannot solve the problems that we create in the same mindset that we create them, is a classic. And so my solutions to how to deal with this problem is to get out of the mindset that caused the problems in the first place. So I'm going to give you a chemist solution us chemists have the solutions, that's what you hire chemists for, <laughs> on how to change our mindset. <laughs> the first way to change the mindset is to lose the fear by not believing what you watch on the controlled major mass media, CMMM. And everything that I presented in the first hour is all mass media information. If we are afraid of chemtrails and think they're going to poison us and we're all going to die, chemtrails are going to poison us and we're all going to die. But if we don't think that, it won't happen. So don't think it. The change that we can make is to know that we are able to control what we think and if we don't want to think about something, ipso dixit, it doesn't happen. Now, <laughs> good luck with that, Lenny. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, well, it's because you just keep looking at other yeah. things and saying, well, it did happen because they told me it happened. What the hell is that? Yeah. Solution number two look at the global view while taking local action. We all live here locally. If we're trying to take global action, some of us, like my friend Carol, she can take global action. She's working on a space treaty and trying to get signatures of heads of state. Me, I like to work in Ashland, and there's not too many heads of state here in Ashland. But each of us can do what we do on our own personal basis, and by doing it consistently and unwavering, other people will start joining us in what we're doing and will build the momentum. Start by working on a human scale locally and grow it from there. Number three, be good at what you do and be sure of what you know. What that means is you do your homework and if you find something that you think is really neat on the net, you see, if Rick's got it on his site, 
because if he's got it on his side, it has to be true. <laughs> no, you do your homework and you go and you find another site on the internet that gives you the same information but doesn't start from the same source. And if you have two different sources that are saying the same thing, you can be pretty sure that what they're both saying is true. <laughs> I used to use this in politics all the time. I had a right-wing site and a left-wing site. And the right-wing site and the left-wing site would give me the total opposite viewpoint in 90% of the material. And it would be exactly the same on 10% of the material. And that 10% of the material where they were both the same, complaining about the same issues, was like bank. You could count on it. It was good information. And gee, now I don't know what sites to really trust. So the site I use over on the left is called Counterpunch. It's at counterpunch.org. The site I use on the right is a libertarian site called lourockwell.com. And then I use a site called Strike the Root. It just disagrees with everybody. And so between the three, Strike the Root is more the Harry David Thoreau type of noble everything. And sometimes the far right or the far left will agree with it. That's how I get good information and check things. Number four, hold a high resonant vibration. How many people have thought about how matter and energy work to the point where you know about mat mass and waves being different things? The problem with mass and energy waves and matter being different things is that while it works real good in theory, in practice they're not. We don't have waves, we don't have particles, we have waveables. And if we look at our particles, they always behave like particles. And if we look at our waves, they always behave like waves. But if we don't look too closely, the waves act like particles and the particles act like waves. So really what's going on is that the waves, which are the energy, can condense into particle form, but will always vibrate at a resonant frequency that is a combination of all the waves that make up you. So if we're in the room together, maybe 25 of us here, we have one wave that is entrained from the room that is a combination of all the individual waves that we put in. And if we raise the resonant vibration of all of us to a level where we're all thinking well and feeling good and that, we'll leave here and we will have created more time for us to take the action that we're going to take because if you understand what how frequency works, you have some waves that are short and some waves that are long. And the long waves are low energy and the short waves are high energy. And if we can keep up a high energy, people on the long, low energy don't even see what's going on at that higher energy. So you create more time for yourself by don't worry, be happy than you do by all the stress from watching what they tell us about things. So means number five to solving these problems is to keep yourself healthy and hydrated. Hydrated, drink water. Water is such a good substance. But when you put coffee or tea into your water, it doesn't count as a glass of water anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still getting your fluids. And throughout the day, the average human being will pass two and a half liters of fluids through their system. But drink at least a glass or two of water that is unadulterated with any substance other than water. And what that does is it replenishes the minerals in your system that are dissolved at low level in the water. And it creates a way of just continually moving a flush through your system so that you're 
bond, chemical bonds within your body don't get old and stale. Uh, there are other ways of jump-starting your body, but in reality, most of the time people are ill, it's because they haven't kept their hydration level up and they're dehydrating. Number six. Did you have a question? No, no, okay. I'm sorry. Number six. Disengage gradually from all activities within the old system that don't serve your needs. We've been playing under this old system for a long time and some of us just know how to operate within the system and other of us have run away from the system and don't operate within it at all. But for every part of the system that we use and don't really need, we're now giving support to that portion of the system. And if we want to change the way we have our lifestyles, getting out of the entrainment of the current system is first and foremost. Number seven, think for yourself and keep aware. It's amazing how many people will think for themselves, but not then check outside to see if their thinking is in agreement with the surroundings of the things that are out there that they've been thinking about. And it's really easy to do when you're a hermit like I am, to go out into the woods and start thinking about something, get all the way down a path, come back into the reality of the situation, and find out that one of your cardinal assumptions was just not correct. Do not think that other people think the same way you do. We are taught by a common school system that teaches everybody the exact same thing in the education process. Except that it doesn't. It just uses the same names of the same things and teaches everybody differently. So we have a common reality that isn't really common. And we do have to check with each other that we're working from the same basis. Number eight. Make regular contact with nature. This is the Pacific West. We're all here because this is the place we can make regular contact with nature. And I like to go out and walk around and talk to the trees and the plants. And if I'm thinking about what I'm doing, I'll be creating lunch and I'll walk outside and say hello to the tree and pick some arugula off the ground and have a better, more healthy lunch because I took the time to remember that I grow arugula. But if you're not in tune with nature and you're not growing something, it becomes hard to really engage with life on the planet. And I know that in rural areas we have it much, much easier than they have in urban areas. But even if you live in an urban area, grow house plants and keep a pet. And to tell you the truth, the wavelengths of the house plants and the wavelengths of the pets are way higher than the wavelengths that we humans carry. Number nine, take time off and treat yourself well. You know, we've come through this system where we're taught keep working, keep working, keep moving, got to get it done, got to chug through. If you're not keeping yourself well, and other people are depending on you, you're not going to be there when they really need you. So instead of working the 60 hour week and pushing yourself, think about what you're doing, work a 20 hour week and put the other 40 hours into something you find enjoyable, maybe through some of the suggestions I'll come up with later about changing how you work. Number 10. Keep a healthy skepticism of all information. No matter what anybody says, no matter how many degrees they have, no matter how much of an expert on a topic that person pretends to be, if you have a question about what they're saying because it doesn't fit the way you think, ask the question. And if you get an answer that'll change the way you think, Start changing the way you think. 
I have found a couple times in my life where I've gotten a piece of information that was a revelation, but it also caused me to change my thinking completely. The last person who did that was a friend of Rick's, Jerry Pollock. And Jerry Pollock came out with a book in 2011 called The Fourth Phase of Water. And the book Jerry Pollock wrote should redefine biochemistry. It's that good. And what did the scientific community do with Jerry Pollock's book? They shot the messenger. Go away, Mr. Pollock. We don't want to hear this. We don't want to do the work of changing our way of thinking to be what's right when we have this completely wrong way of thinking that makes us a lot of profit. Pollock is a true prophet. It'd be fun to have him come here for a talk. But uh, I think the man is quite busy right now trying to solve the problems of how water can allow the world to know it exists. But you know, water is conscious. And at the level of water consciousness, there must be a real interesting game being. What I do is I take myself as a human being and I project myself into a single water molecule. And if I'm a single water molecule in the ocean and I'm looking around and seeing what my neighborhood buddy water molecules are doing, they're doing the exact same thing I'm doing. But if we've got human conscious at that level, boy, now we've got <coughs> consciousness, but not enough mass to hold the consciousness that we've created because, gee, how much mass do we have in these human bodies versus a water molecule which 18 grams per mole, real small, tiny water molecule. But there's got to be something at that size that is to water as water is to us. I think that we're going to find a whole lot of different solutions to problems when we use our imagination to project ourselves into other sizes and scale and then look through it as though it was this scale and compare the differences because that's where the learning is going to come in. Solution number 11, have a personal set have a personal basis set of belief and then check to see that you actually believe it. I know I talk to a lot of people around who tell me all sorts of things and then when I observe their behavior it seems like what they were giving me was lip service to tell me how they don't behave. But if people are consistent with how they believe what their set of beliefs are then they're capable of walking to their own drummer, and that's somebody I'm willing to follow. We don't all have to be leaders all the time, but we do have to be leaders when we're in a group of one and setting direction for ourselves. And if you can't function in a group of one, spend some time alone and learn who you are. The Fibonacci sequence, the golden mean ratio, has two number ones in it. That's the meaning of duality, that there's a one that is the individual and a one that is the whole species of humanity. And if we can be our own individual and connect to the whole species of humanity, that's what real duality is. It's not heads and tails fighting over the, to see who owns the coin. Twelve. <clears throat> Question everything again from a foundation of your own knowledge. I have a benefit that nobody else has in that I'm trained as a professional chemist and I can look at the molecular chemistry of a situation and see how it works in any different segment of scale. So if somebody tells me something and I can't pick up a molecular chemistry model for what they told me, I'm more likely to disbelieve them than if I can find a simple analogy to some facet of, a me of molecular chemistry. 
everybody has something that they know that they can serve as a vantage point for the perspective that they use. And just having self-consistency with those vantage points will make us a better place, will make the world a better place. Thirteen, learn more about everything you find interesting. It seems natural. That's what we did when we were kids. If you found something that you didn't know, you hit the World Book Encyclopedia and you looked it up and you read about it and then you go check a book at the library and then you say, oh, that isn't right. And you explore it more and you apply some experiments and you get to know what you're talking about. Nowadays, I think people just repeat what they heard on television. Next, 14. Share love and practice peace. That's one of those things that in chemistry, what's the chemical formula for love? Is there a chemical formula for love? Does love even exist in chemical terms? It has to. It exists in physical terms and chemistry describes physics. But you know, I think one of the fundamental problems with science in this day and age is it's lost contact with reality. And the science, econ <coughs> economics, and psychology of everything we do nowadays was determined by three German Jewish fellows in the late 18th century. <laughs> uh, Einstein, sure, he defined science. Karl Marx, how about that for economic theory? And Sigmund Freud, psychology at its best. But if you look at them in terms stepping back under the parable of Camelot and King Arthur, each one has their mordred. And each one by their precise scientific or theoretical viewpoint created a model system that ignored too much of reality that it didn't work. <coughs> Marx and economics? Tell me that all the wars of the 20th century weren't fought in that topic. Freud and psychology? Yeah, it's all a game of id versus ego. But you know what? We got this guy named Ber Bernays who created the idea that you can use psychology as a weapon of mass destruction through the form of advertising and get everybody killing each other over the want of another product. And Einstein? Einstein's Mordred was a guy named Robert Oppenheimer who took all that neat stuff and created a bomb out of it, and we're still lobbing these bombs at other people. So it's time to step back and just practice peace. You don't get peace unless you go out of your way to diffuse situations and you don't let people bother you by what they spout off. Fifteen, work to form agreements in common language. I don't know how many times I have sat at meetings of watershed councils or other groups that are supposed to do something and seen the group come to a very specific agreement on a real hard topic only to find that they're using the same words to mean different concepts and they're going back to their constituents and selling a whole ball of hogwash because they can talk in terms that their constituents want to hear and negotiate with the other side in terms where everybody goes to go back and please their constituents and nobody really gets what they want or gets to improve the situation. If we have good simple language that everybody knows what rules they're under and how to follow those rules, we'd have a lot less disagreement and a lot simpler scheme for people to follow. They don't want us to have a simpler scheme. Sixteen, find your guild and get good at doing what you do with people you enjoy doing it with. When was the last time anybody had a guild that they belonged to? 
Yeah, there's not too many of them around anymore, but every profession used to be a guild where people would train apprentices and if you wanted to be a plumber, you'd get in with a plumbing guild and they'd teach you plumbing and then from then on in you went and be a plumber. Now you got to learn a whole bunch of stuff, you get into a job and they say, here, do your job and they leave you alone and they don't tell you what to do. And for somebody who just went to college, not being told what to do is a scary, frightening situation that they don't know how to handle. So the, the best thing to do is avoid college. Um, 17. Prime the pump by using your downtime to do the things that you enjoy doing. I don't know how many people I know who find that they are alone and have some downtime, and the first thing they do is they turn on that idiot box. Click. And for the next three hours, they are lost in the world of fictional television and have no idea, but when they come back into reality, they haven't advanced what they do by anything. If I have time where I find an appointment canceled and I have two hours to do what I want to do, I'll grab one of those books on my shelf that I haven't seen for a while and have the time to actually read because I can't schedule time to read anymore. I just don't have it. The other thing is when you're a writer and you're trying to write new original things, reading is your enemy. If you read too much stuff, you're continually trying to change what you're going to say, but what's written isn't necessarily what's right. And we have been taught, if it's in a textbook, believe it. But you know, I, I've come to the conclusion that historical fiction is a lot more likely than true fiction or than true history because true history is written by the victors who have an agenda and will tell you the story any way they want. At least historical fiction is written by an author who can imagine the possibilities and makes realistic dialogue that you can buy into for how that could have come down that way. Number 18, eat good food. This goes back to what I talked about with GMOs and that. But in all of human history, humans got their nutrition from food until this last century when we've currently allowed the food system to be controlled by what used to be the poison industry. How does that work? <laughs> but I'm a chemist and the news of last week was that Dow and DuPont formed a new company and then split it up into three and they're going to monopolize everything. Um, don't bet on it. The industrial corporations think they have it real good, but right now there's a nice little war taking place on the planet and it's a light versus dark game and the dark doesn't have a chance. Game's been over for a while, checkmate is completed, but you know, as long as the dark doesn't tip their king and walk away from the board, they think they got control. We'll let them think they got control, but just sit back and watch. Don't take too many actions that put yourself in a place where you might have damage, because things are going to get better real quick as soon as we can step up out of the mindset that we used to be in and into a better mindset, which is what we're getting to. Number 20 in my solutions for fixing things, speak your piece plainly and clearly. If you have something to say, don't muddle your words, don't take 15 minutes, just say it and get it out and let it be there as a meme for the world to deal with. A lot of times in the interest of being polite and political correctness, we don't say what we're really thinking and we lose that opportunity to get something out there that really needed to be said. So 21, listen with attention, but act with intention. A lot of times I find I'm having conversations with people who are so busy thinking about what they want to say next that they're not listening to the conversation we're happening, we're having. And then when I come back later, they tell me I told them something that I never said. They heard me say it because they were thinking of what they wanted to say, 
based on what they thought I was going to tell them and never listened to the words I was actually explaining, that happens. I'm not the world's expert on everything, but I do listen to what people say with attention so that when they ask me a question, I attempt to answer the question I'm hearing. It's extremely frustrating for those people who like to ask questions to keep the person they're questioning off balance because you just turn it around and question them back and they can't understand why it's happening. 22, play games. And use the framework of the game as a platform for learning. Because I've watched and you give a kid a new video game and he goes, Rrr, and two hours later he's there on level 45 killing all the bad guys. Let's get rid of the killing in these video games. I'm sure I can invent a video game that is molecular chemistry where you go into the laboratory, you mix A with B, and it explodes into light and color. <laughs> Kids will play that game. Mm -hmm. But we need games like that in all different areas, and we need to invent games that are role-playing games that can be acted out in person that teach a skill that that person can then take home with them and apply. So I'm looking forward to working with the Caterpillar and inventing a million little farm games for kids because I know the kids will pick up the games and I bet that we will see the smallest little kids being the best teachers over the next 10 years because they're going to pick it up and run with it while all the rest of us struggle because the old paradigm has convinced us of things that just weren't true. 23. Find a bit of quiet time every day. If you meditate, that's fine. If you just can sit there and think, that's fine. But so many people in this world who have families and kids and other things have the constant interaction that it's never quiet and that doesn't even include those people who have to have the television or the radio running 24-7 so that there's some noise in the room to keep them company. We don't need that. We need to turn off the inputs and find the self and then let that self decide on the inputs that are okay or not. 24. Care for all non-human beings. When we're doing stuff, we've got to be looking out for the animals, the plants, the crystals, the fungi, everything. This world is created right now with so much industrial pollution and so much problems that are human-caused because we've had a human-centric circle doing human-type things for so long that we just need to look at all water beings from the standpoint of being water beings at every scale and dimension, water is the only thing that is constant throughout the whole system. So if water is constant in there, I'm sure that there are analogs to rivers and oceans at smaller scales and larger scales, and it's just a matter of how we look at things to see how it works. So by considering everything water being to be part of our domain, I think that makes a better place. 25, participate in a group with an external focus. Guess what, that's everything, everybody here can check that off. We are here with the Southern Oregon Blue Skies Project, which is a group with an exterior focus. So we're all here trying to do something that is going to make the planet a better place to be, that is a great solution. Mm -hmm. 26, <clears throat> turn off the television or the computer and read a book. As an author, I want people to read my books. As somebody who interacts with the society, when I pick up a book and I read the depth of a constructed thought, I can use that impact better than if I'm looking at a video and having somebody tell me about how to do that. And I'd really love to see a system where once you've read a book, you can write a little review of the book, 
put it out and then get some sort of compensation for your review so that writing becomes something that anybody at any time can make a little bit of profit from so that they can then continue going. And I think that we should have a lot of supports built into the system that reward people for good behavior. The system right now seems to be all full of supports that reward people for bad behavior. And the more outrageous the behavior, the bigger the rewards. So there's no question why banksters like to print their own money to loan to us. They get big rewards and the rest of us are sort of stuck. <coughs> 27. Learn a new skill that you always wanted to have. I had a friend the other day tell me that he wanted to learn to play the guitar. I said, well, do you have a guitar? He said, no. I said, well, don't you need a guitar to learn how to play? I said, yeah, I want to learn how to play, but I don't have time to do it. You have time to do anything you want to do. You can make time to do things. And if you're vibrating at a high enough frequency, that does make the time to do things. So I told him to pick up his guitar. It doesn't mean you have to learn it to be able to be Neil Young and on stage singing, old man, look at yourself. But you know, if we had our old men looking at ourselves, it would be a little better. 28, use your imagination. Einstein once said that imagination is more important than knowledge. And everything we do now beats at our imagination. The television gives us images of stories so that we now have the picture. How many people have actually ever listened to War of the Worlds on the radio? I mean, that is just such a phenomenal imagery, and you don't get a picture at all. You have to make it up all yourself. But that's not the way the system works. It would be nice to have opportunities to make things. Yes. Um, I just want to check with you uh, if there's going to be time for any questions because we're, we're running towards 9 o'clock. I have two more solutions and we'll take questions. Okay? Solution 29. Stop doing things that you do not wish to do. <laughs> kind of makes sense. But yeah. <laughs> just quit. I, if you're paid to do something and your boss is on you and you know it has to be done and you just don't want to do it but it's part of your job, you got to do it. But so many of us do things that we know we don't want to do. There's an inertia to doing it, but because we feel some sort of obligation to somebody, we do it. Can't do that anymore. And finally, 30. Keep track by measuring the outcomes of the things you wish to follow. I'm amazed at the number of people who follow things and never bother to track anything that they're following. And so they listen and they talk the talking points of whatever they hear, but when you ask them what sort of data they have for that opinion that they just spouted off, oh, I read it in something. But there's no actual data. When I get to the point where I want to know something, I open up a page in the back of my notebook and I start recording numbers or facts or stuff. And I'm always carrying a notebook. The notebooks are always filled with stuff. And I don't lose the ideas that I think about. But I don't always remember them until I go back to the notebooks and have to look through it. So my current notebook has things that I'm really up on but I have a project to go through past notebooks, and that's going to be a lot about what the endeavors I do in the future, is taking the stuff that I learned in the past and constructing a new outlook so that we no longer are entrained by the low vibration of the old system. <laughs>